Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Mikey, otherwise known as Alpha, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a stream deck for about $3 or less. Now, keep in mind, uh, the specific methodology I'm going to be showing you is for Android devices only, but uh, there are alternatives available for iOS, and the principle and concept I'm going to be showing you is basically the same. Whether you have an iOS or Android device, uh, you just might have to use a different tool or a different app. But without further ado, um, let's uh, go into uh, what I think uh, the benefits of this setup would be. Uh, the benefits would be, uh, one, if you use this in tandem with studio mode, and you could watch my studio mode tutorial whenever you'd like, uh, it allows you to call up your scenes whenever and uh, anytime just using your phone only. Uh, it allows you to use your phone as a switchboard as opposed to buying an external stream deck for about 150, 250 um, North dollars, like not US dollars, but North of that price uh, is what you're going to have to pay for a stream deck. And, uh, the cool thing about having your phone is being that, uh, this app allows you to put as many buttons as you'd like. Uh, you don't have to pay for those additional buttons and you could use custom macros, uh, key bindings, which is what I mostly care about. And, um, you could even use it to trigger sound. So you could use your phone as a soundboard as well. And it's it's quite awesome. Uh, the usability is really there. Um, and without further ado, uh, let's get into it. So first things first, we're gonna open up our web browser and uh, I'm gonna look up deck board. And would you look at that? I already have the website. So if you go right here, um, I'll put this link in the description so you guys can see it. But basically, this app uh, allows you to uh, add a bunch of macro shortcuts uh, and allows you to trigger them just using your phone only. And this app actually has a free version, so you can have some free buttons to use without, you know, actually paying any money. So technically, this would be free if you're using uh, this methodology. Um, but keep in mind, this one's only for Android devices. Now let's go into the alternatives for iOS, right? So if we go to iOS, uh, the iOS app store actually has uh, a stream deck app uh, provided by Elgato, but this is $3 a month or 25 or 24 99 a year. So you do have to pay for this. So this would technically be $3, but not for the year. So this is, uh, but it does have compatibility with key lights uh, which is something that, um, Elgato makes, uh, and it just happens to play nice with OBS studio and, uh, SL OBS, but this is only on iOS. So I can't use this nor can I, no, like I, I just don't have access to this just because it's on iPhone, uh, Streamlabs OBS. Streamlabs OBS has their own app. Uh, in which case you could also control streams, but you could also stream from there as well. So if I scroll down, there should be a way to, where is it? Streamlabs OBS app, uh, iOS. If I go right here, you get a little, you can, you can use your Streamlabs OBS app as a little remote control in which case you can use your phone to trigger scenes and trigger just about anything that Streamlabs OBS allows you to. So you do have options if you're gonna be using an iPhone, but like I said, the main methodology I'm gonna be using is hotkeys, uh, and you can use that for either or, uh, depending on what you're using. So all you gotta do is you need to just go ahead and download the app uh, on Windows, so download the client, and you also need to download it uh, from Google Play as well. And you need to make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi uh, as your uh, as your computer, your desktop, or your laptop, whatever it might be. And it does work with uh, the latest OBS and Streamlabs OBS, so you have nothing to worry about. Um, but it. It, it's honestly something I've been using for a while and it's been treating me super, super nicely. And uh, all you gotta do is just install the app, download the client, and when you download the client, 
And actually, I'll just redo it myself so you guys can see what it looks like. Let's just go ahead and wait for that. Let's just load it on up. Uh, Windows protecting your PC, more info. I'm going to hit run anyway. I know this app is trusted. I know uh, some of your virus, uh, anti, your anti-malware might go off. I'm just going to hit all users. I'm just going to hit yes. Uh, install. And it's just going to install for me. And we're going to run deck board. And as soon as deck board finishes, it's going to open up this app just for us. You see it just opened up in my system tray, but it's going to pop up on our screen any moment. And if you see it right here, you'll notice that I already have buttons set up. Um, let's go ahead and open up OBS so you can see what it looks like. Oh, I already have OBS open. Okay. Let's see. Let's uh, exit. And I'll reopen it. There we go. So now OBS is going to be opening up. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the right hand, the left hand side of my screen. And you'll see that I have studio mode enabled. Uh, and this is just something that I use in tandem with OBS. If you want to watch my studio mode tutorial, uh, trust me, it'll your, your setup will just get infinitely better and more professional uh, if you use studio mode with your switcher uh and this is just it, it's very it, it, it'll treat you nicely i promise so here's the concept of what we're going to be doing so we're going to be going to file settings in our obs and i'm going to go to hotkeys and you could find the same on streamlabs obs i believe there are wherever you need to go for your settings i'm sure there's a settings button down there if you go to file settings you can get to this go to the page that lets you go to the hotkeys and all you got to do is look to where your scenes are. So look, to, so you'll see a title that has your scenes. So for example, I have one for Black, Countdown, Desktop, Elgato card. Um, and you'll notice uh, in Switch to Scene, I have a random hotkey right over here. So all you got to do is just push a random combination of keys that you know you will never press on accident. Uh, so you typically you'd want these keys to be out of reach from you. Um, or just make it to a point where you'd need to contort your hand to a point where you won't press this accidentally and switch to a scene. And the benefit of using this with studio mode is even if you accidentally do, your scene will not switch unless you hit the button that lets you switch your scene. And we're going to be setting that up in just a second. But all you got to do is just set a random hotkey for switch to scene for all of your scenes. And then... If you want to make a button to switch to your scene, and I'll just go ahead and make a random new one. And you'll see when I hit uh, this little plus button for a new board. And the cool thing about this is you can actually have more than one board. So you can really have multiple buttons uh, doing a lot of things. Um, we'll show you an example of what this does. Test, actually. We'll just name it that. You can put it a background color. You can do whatever you want. But if you go to new buttons right here, Switchboard, multi-action. So you can have like a little button here to change the board you're using. You can set it to a keyboard macro, an advanced keyboard macro. You can have it set to type text on your screen or type text um, just in general. So like a kind of like a copy paste. Uh, multimedia, so you can use it as your multimedia keys. So if you have Spotify open, you could use it to play pause. Uh, you can use it to play audio, so you can just use this as a soundboard and load in any audio file. Open up a website, so you can use that. A folder, a program. Uh, you can even it even directly controls Spotify as well. You can have it work with Twitch. So send chat, add stream marker, slow chat, followers only, subscribers only, emotes only. Uh, for Twitter, you can have it post a tweet. Uh, for OBS Studio, you could have it set to any one of these streaming controls, toggle source, uh, audio device control. Um, this is really up to you. Uh, for the most part, I have these things hotkeyed uh, because it's faster that way. And I'll show you why. Um, the reason why I don't use select scene 
uh, for, and this even applies for stream decks, is the reason I don't use select scene is because it sends that scene live. So for example, and I'll just hit, I'll just hit okay just to show you. And that's me right there. I don't have my webcam white balance, so it does look a little bit ugly. But the cool thing about this is that I'll actually pull out my phone right now. Pull out my phone. And the cool thing about this is that I'm going to open up the stream. I'm going to open up the deck board app. And I'm going to highlight over this. And I'm going to hit uh, scan. So on the deck board app, if my camera is going to even load, it's not even going to load, but I'll show a screenshot of the app right there. Uh, if you go to the deck board app, there's going to be a little scan button. It's going to be on the right hand side. It's going to look like a little weird QR code. You're going to hit that. It'll turn on your phone's camera and all you got to do is just hover right over it and it will let your phone use it. You see mine's showing green right now because I have that little green, that little green board right there but I can just swipe and get to the main board that I want to use so what I want to do is uh, let's say you know I want to change my camera's white balance you know and I don't want to go hunting for the program so I'll just click webcam tools it'll open up that program for me and you see I just hit this button exactly if I go here if I click on this oh it just crashed how beautiful yep that's uh, it does that every now and again but I've never had a problem with it crashing on stream. I'm not going to cut it here. Uh, I know programs crash from time to time. Uh, the developer will probably see this and be like, oh shit. And then I got to patch it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but let's go over here. Let's go back to our live switcher. If I go in here and I click here. It's crashing again. It's so weird. That is super, super weird. Okay, so I kind of figured it out. Right now, Deckboard has a problem, and I hope the developer sees this and fixes it in time. So, um, I think that this, this app is developed by one person, so what a feat of engineering. Uh, this person had to have gone gone through just to code this so hats off to you that doesn't mean this app is crap but um, Essentially what you would do is you go into here you label it whatever you want you would go to um, Run program you look for the executable file. So I looked for Logitech webcam software and I looked for the exe and um, That's all I had it set to do. I didn't really do anything else um, And let's go ahead and link that back up and I'm not going to make any cuts here because I want you to see like the same struggle I'm going through in terms of like setting up and showing you this. Um, but let's go into my live switcher. If you see right here on my phone and I'll actually turn off studio mode so my screen is bigger. I'll just go ahead and hit webcam tools. That'll pop up. I can go to my webcam options and change the white balance and that's already fixed save i can get rid of that and it really is it, it really does help in a pinch whenever you're trying to do anything like this like for example your webcam doesn't look right on stream and you got to fix it um you could easily have that set to webcam tools you could have it set to post a tweet whenever you're live you can have it set to do just about anything you want and usually what i use it for is to mute and unmute my mic or my desktop my transitions and to switch the scenes. That's mostly what I do. And I do that with hotkeys. So like I said, you go to your hotkeys, set a hotkey for your when you're switching to your scenes, set a hotkey for quick transitions. And that's why studio mode is beautiful because if you use studio mode in tandem with, uh, if you use studio mode in tandem with uh, all of this, you know, I can call up my countdown and call up my black. I could fade to black if I want to. I can call up my countdown, fade to that. Wait, where is it? Countdown, fade, and my countdown will start. If I go to my my webcam, I can cut to it, and I could be like, "Oh my god!" If I want to do like a funny moment, I could be like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's it, it's very helpful. It's very useful. 
Um, I could even mute my mic. I can mute my mic on OBS. I could unmute it. I can mute my desktop audio and you notice how it's not moving. Like I didn't even have to click anything. It just did it. Uh, and the way you can do that actually is if you go to mute mic, uh, if I go to my mute mic one, I labeled it mute mic, my action. So I had it set to audio dev device control under OBS studio. And I just clicked um, whatever microphone device I need. I wanted OBS to do. And I had it set to toggle mute. And you could have it set to increase or decrease volume in case, you know, you're loud or too quiet or anything like that. And you need to mess with your levels. So you can technically use this as a, like a makeshift mixer if you want. Um, but uh, the also a cool thing about this is if you click here uh, or where is it? If I click here. Yeah, typically what you could do is you could use a photo as the background. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I, f I, I forgot how to like set a photo. What is it? What if I just go here? Oh, that's how you do it. Okay. So if you want to set a custom photo or custom anything, you just click here. You click on it and then you just choose the photo you want to set it to. So you can just add custom photos if you want. So if you want to put like meme pictures or anything like that, you could do that. You can change the text color, the border color. You really get rid of any of that. I'm actually getting rid of this because I don't like that little red outline in there. I don't know why I don't I don't like that. Let's get rid of that. And all of this updates in real time on your phone. So say, for example, I want to move an app. You see how it just like flicked on over? Let me just get out of studio mode so you can see that. If I move that right there, you see how that moves instantly? You see that? Yeah, basically this works instantly. And I could use this, I could swipe to multiple boards. I can have more buttons so I can easily, like if I want a soundboard, I could easily go like that, set all my sounds, I could do, and it'll be helpful. I even have one for this song. I know you know what this song is. Uh, and you could use it to stop it. I'm not going to keep that going on for that long. Um, but anyways, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, tutorial uh, showing you how to do this. Um, I know I showed this methodology only with uh, the version I use, but uh, I'm sure the stream lab, I know the Elgato one, the stream deck allows you in the stream deck software to set hotkeys because I know um, uh, Styles, who uses a stream deck, and I, I and I helped him out with this when he was when I was setting up studio mode. Um, I helped him set up hotkeys that he can use uh, with his stream deck, so it would work with studio mode. Uh, I don't have any much more to say. So again, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, turn that bell notification on so you get notifications whenever I upload a new video tutorial. Uh, or even go live because I do stream on Twitch. So that would be twitch.tv slash Mikey Alpha. Um, definitely follow me there. It's going to be a fun time. And uh, I think that's going to be it, guys. So three, two, one, stay sexy. Please have yourselves a damn good one. Peace.